Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Seychelle Van Poole. I'm Wendy Papazan. I'm Via Williams. And I'm Sarah Reynolds. In growing a business, compensation and how you structure your team members or employees' pay uh, can 100% determine whether or not your business not just survives, but most of you that are listening, I know, want a growing business, right? That's what we're in. Mm-hmm. It's called empire building. Building uh, yes. typically means growth, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so compensation uh, so much determines whether or not your business will actually grow. Uh, I always say, and I tell my leaders often, that pay will automatically determine behavior. Um, so if you are wanting to look Ooh, at, get a certain behavior, you need to look mm. at how someone is paid um, to ensure mm-hmm. that their pay is structured around the behavior that you're wanting. So on today's podcast, we're going to be uh, diving in. I say diving in a lot, I've noticed you guys, but uh, we're diving <laughs> in today <laughs> uh, to this topic on how to structure compensation that will actually lead to a growing business. So how to pay people that will lead uh, to a growing business. I love that. Well, there's four different types of compensation. Uh, You've got commission only, you have salary only, you have base salary plus bonus and or commission. And uh, at the end of the day, it's a W-2 employee versus a 1099 employee. And it's important to understand that. And I know I speak for mm-hmm. everyone when I've made ton, when I can when I say I've made tons of mistakes in terms of paying people. And honestly, it's this is not my strong point at all. I think it's one of your superpowers, uh, Sarah. But honestly, it's it's been a it's been a challenge for me to really even understand and figure this out. I always have to think about it really hard before I do it. Mm-hmm. And that's probably why I've made so many mistakes. Well, <laughs> let's leave it to me to ask you if you want to hear a fail story. <laughs> leave it. Of course, probably have a fail story. Yeah, well, here, good, good, good. So I think, <laughs> well, I think Wendy, to your point, um, I think where where a lot of us make a mistake, and where I certainly have made a mistake, is that we can't envision our businesses scaled up and big. Like when we start mm-hmm. and launch a business, we think, okay, like we're just lucky to be here. And then we just had this fluky good year. Like we don't believe it. Maybe, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just projecting, but. And so you pay and you set compensation based on revenue and you, mm-hmm. and you set it based on current revenue. And so what you fail to understand is that a lot of positions have a ceiling that it just doesn't make sense to pay them beyond that to have a really mm. healthy net income yeah. in a business, mm. right? You know, it, it's, it's like, a, um, you know, a, a, an entry-level admin position has a ceiling. It's not worth it to have a person over a certain amount in a role, right? And so I, I had um, that happen, and I'm not going to mention the title out of, out of respect, but it was an admin position. And when we started, I mean, I was paying like a percentage off of top-line revenue, you know, to help mitigate the fact that I didn't want to pay a high salary. I didn't want to have a high right. fixed overhead. So I wanted to switch it to be a cost of goods sold, right? And hold on, hold on, let's sudden, pause. Like, can we pause, yeah. Mia? Yeah, because what, what you're saying is like so good. And I want to make sure our listeners um, are understanding. So basically, what you had agreed to was paying on a lower revenue salary that, that comes in, okay, yeah. be, to lower the salary, thinking that mm-hmm. that would help you net more money. Is that right? hundred yeah. percent. That's okay. right. And I find okay. most people and lower start risk, that way. Lower risk for you up yeah. front, greater reward for the yeah. employee on the back end. Most startups start that way, where we we yeah. kind of want to burden cost of goods sold rather than burden fixed overhead, right? The problem is, is that it's really hard to do takeaway. And this particular person, I looked up one day and they were making like $80,000 a year mm-hmm. in a position that really should have been like 45000 Right. Mm. And, you know, you try to take that away from someone. It is not a great situation or conversation. Luckily, that person actually didn't leave me. You know, they we all just kind of we, we figured out a win win together. But I'm very lucky. I think most of the time they would leave. It's just very hard to ratchet. Oh, hi. I actually need you to make less amount of money. This isn't going to work because it's too much. Thanks for right? working so hard and building our Thank business. Thank you. Yes. Right. Now I'm going to so do it's a away. tricky situation. You yeah. have to try to project. And and so I and I have another one very similar. So I have two fail stories from when I was launching my real estate team at the time where I did that. And I'm super careful now. I think that is 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 such a common um 
common thing that I see or hear about is because in the beginning, when you're first um, setting things up, it makes it, mm-hmm. it make, well, that makes sense. I'll just give a little bit yeah. of percentage to this person. Yep. But then yeah. eventually, that when you need to hire more people, when you need to grow, what yeah. ends up happening is that it actually stunts your growth because of the way that you set up the original person's right. compensation. That's and so right. it's right. so important to be looking at compensation in terms of growth. So. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and this I is just a one. lesson for every aspect yeah. in your business, which is yeah. even though you're on a, even though you're on a dirt path right now, you always need to think about your business as a 16 lane highway. And mm-hmm. if you can, right. you know, tell your admin team, tell yourself, uh, ask the question, is this, would we do it this way if we had 10 listings a month? Would we do it this way if we had 20 listings a month? If, would we do it this way if we had 100 listings a month? Mm-hmm. And most of the time, the answer is probably no. So if you can get in the habit yeah. of asking yourself that question in every aspect of your business, it's going to be super helpful for you. I love that. One of the biggest mistakes we made early on was um, I listened to um, people that were ahead of me in business, but I didn't look at what their actual profitability was. Mm. And so they told me what their comp model was. And this is specifically on like our sales um, rep side or a sales agent if you're in real estate. And they were like, oh yeah, this is what we do for comp. And this is what everybody does. And it was a really, really high to the sales agent, very low to the business model. And um, we have a really robust operations team. And so the two mistakes I made early on were, number one, I didn't look at what value proposition they were giving um, for their business. Number two, I didn't look at all at their profitability. And what happened was, is I gave away the farm, but yet we were giving 10x the value of what these other companies were giving. And literally with every single sale or company made, I went further into debt. Mm -hmm. And it literally was like almost painful. It was like, the more we sell, the more we lose. This is terrible. (laughs) And so, you know, the fastest way to get salespeople to quit is to go back and renegotiate their compensation. That's like the fastest way to do it. And so I went back trying to save them, but I was not as fortunate as Via. And we had to re-margin the business, renegotiate compensation. And I basically lost our whole sales force um, early Mm. on. And it was a super painful lesson, you know, lesson on, you know, comparing somebody's outsides to your insides. And I looked at the face of their business and didn't realize, A, none of those businesses were profitable or they had zero support and administrative and operations support. Mm. And so that's why they could run on those margins versus what we wanted to do with our business was create a much more white glove experience. Um, and our agents are just as, you know, profitable in their net, you know, in their net income at a different comp model, but that's because we do a lot more on the back end. Right. Um, but I just, I, I was too naive in business and took other people's advice instead of really getting to to know our numbers and our vision and our future and where we wanted to go with it. Um, and instead just took other people's at face value. And that was, it was a huge lesson. I'm glad I learned it early, um, but it was a really painful one <laughs> that we learned early on. Yeah. 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 Anytime, yeah. anytime we go through a, t- a takeaway with uh, a team member, um, you risk losing them, right? So setting ever, so much of life is, uh, Setting Absolutely. expectations, marriage, Absolutely. I mean, everything in yeah. our life is setting yeah. expectations. Yeah. So when we you set the to... wrong expectation from the beginning, yeah. exactly. you'll lose typically. You're setting yourself yeah. up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And in a yep. way, we, yep. you know, we all are going to have to walk through this at some level and pay for this lesson. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's just a matter of how it's going to look. You know, hopefully, if you listen to this episode and you really think it through, hopefully we'll mitigate that lesson. But you're probably going to have to walk through it. <laughs> you know, yeah. 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 you can't substitute yeah. experience in, in a lot of these cases, right? Yeah, yeah. I agree with you, Via. Because, because at the end of the day, you just really don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. And That's most right. of us, when we're growing our business and ready to hire people, we're, we're hiring out of pain. And so we're That's probably right. going to do what Seychelle did, which is you're going to maybe talk to one or two people. Uh, who mm-hmm. are, who's going to give you advice, and mm-hmm. th- that's that's how you're going to that's how you're going to structure it. And yep. it's really hard to imagine a situation where you're going to sit down and really look at you know 10, 15 people's P and L and decide which one is going to be right for you because you maybe don't even know how to do that. Yeah, yeah. But, and and I'll just give a plug here for you know mm-hmm. the good old millionaire real estate agent because the compensation yep. models in here. Um, are are going to keep mm-hmm. you uh, from from doing what Seychelles did, which is which yep. is to basically go into debt. Yeah, yeah. yep, absolutely. I think 
on our on our hiring uh, series that we did. Um, it's been a while now, ladies. We need to talk about yeah. hiring again soon. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, we yeah. talked about how most people hire out of pain. Yeah, right. I also see that most people structure compensation out of pain. Yes. yes. And so you, you want to be really careful when you're structuring it, that you're not doing it just like, just solve this problem for me really quick. Um, you know, I'll just pay you X, Y, Z just to get this sort of Whatever. off my plate. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, just, and then before you know it, you know, you are struggling with it, right? I, yeah. I know um, knowing their real estate agent is what we have used for a lot of our compensation um, and percentages and budget and things like that. I will say at some point you actually reach a scale above that as well, which I have, and I, I'm in and, and have struggled with at times on this compensation topic. So it's really good if you know that you, if your vision is to be bigger, to think, to think bigger and to go, uh, bigger places, you want to map out the compensation when you're doing four times what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. right. What would it look like? Is that even right. sustainable, right? And so what needs to happen for that? So let's go let's go over what we sort of follow in terms of how to structure compensation, how to look at how to pay someone uh, such a such a real topic here. But the first thing, the very first thing is you want to create a detailed job description, okay? Mm-hmm. And in that job description, you want to be as specific as possible in terms of what that role is, what that role is. You have a good question that you asked yourself beyond this, don't you? Yeah. And and by the way, this question that I'm about to throw in here, Sarah, this focusing question, if you will, is something that I continue to ask my people when I meet with them. And that question is, what is this person accountable to? Mm-hmm. Ultimately, how do they know if they're winning? How do we know mm. if they're winning? And so often when I'm at a, I was just at a staff meeting last week and, um, you know, we have a new ELT executive leadership team in one of our offices and I had every single one of them write down, what do you think you're accountable to? And then they shared their answer and, you know, we talked about it. Some were right, some were wrong. We talked about what the goal and the vision is for that particular office. And um, and that frameworks, the, the details, Sarah, I think of the job description. You know, that's got to be the focusing question that you're answering and creating your detailed job description. And then, of course, talking about the, you know, your missing person, the, the perfect person to fit fill it. Yeah, Good. that's awesome. So wise. So, so wise. The next thing you want to do is you want to create a budget for the position. So you ask yourself, what's the market paying for a similar position? Mm-hmm. And I see people asking their cohorts across the country, what do you pay for a certain position? And that's not valuable for you. Nope. Because, it's not. you know, uh, in Austin, Texas, what we pay someone, for example, for the director of operations is going to be vastly different than, uh, you know, Little Rock, Arkansas. Honestly, right. the cost of yeah. living is skyrocketing here. Um, I know that my husband's company, they just across the board, they did a uh, market analysis of everybody's uh, pay because because wages are rising so quickly in Austin yeah. and people are coming in every day trying to renegotiate and it's better to get ahead of it. So mm. that's the first thing you want to do. Um, and and the only way you're going to get a talented person is to pay them what they're worth. You know, yep. I see this that's all right. the time too. I tell people, talented people expect to be paid for their talents. Absolutely. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you and can, can we just well. And can we just say... Men typically will demand mm-hmm. based on what they um, are worth much more than females. Yes. And yes. so um, what one of our passions is obviously um, amplifying the lives and voices of women in, in business around the world. That's what the four of us are are passionate about. And I think a lot of that starts with as you as a leader um, in terms of mm-hmm. how you look at um the, the females that are interviewing and or, you know, you want to make sure that you are comparing it for their talents, not because they haven't demanded um, a certain amount, yes. uh, if, if I'm making sense. I'm trying to be politically yeah. correct mm-hmm. a little bit here. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. sounding yeah. right, but um, but that's super important as well. Um, one of the things that I recommend is always starting at like at market. Um, as Wendy said, so doing your research on what that position pays in your market, um, but then also um, painting the picture of it, them helping you with growth 
that that's how they can grow their income. Because what we don't, I know some companies have the philosophy to overpay that in the beginning. That's not a philosophy of mine, mainly because I want them to be tied to the vision and the mission and what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish. And so I don't want them to be there just for the pay. I want Mm -hmm. them to to be there to help us build and grow and impact more people's lives. And so because of that, we start at market. And then typically you will see us bump up uh, sometimes pretty short after uh, someone has joined us. So I love that. Yeah. Then you want to ask yourself, uh, is it a maintenance position or a return on investment position? This is Mm -hmm. what what Sarah was talking about. Uh, Is this a position that's going to help you maintain where you're at or... Can you expect growth in revenue from this position? I can remember a conversation with a, an executive of, of Keller Williams who came in and said, I want to make a million dollars a year. And um, and then that, that person went to that person's boss and said, well, how big does the company need to get so that this person makes a million dollars a year? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Well, you're in charge of that. If you can make this happen, we'll pay you a million dollars. And I think people are, can be short-sighted in their thinking mm-hmm. there because the right person is going to take that and they're going to they're going to run with it. They're going to see so the calling I think card. sometimes yeah. sometimes we maybe don't want to offer that or but like the right person will 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 get what they want while you're getting what you want at the same time. Yeah. 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 I had a I had a big aha this week on this topic. Um, and I'm sorry, Via, but I I, no, I know you were about to say something, but I had a big aha on this because I'm reading the book, Scaling Up. I've mentioned it multiple times. I'm now mm-hmm. reading it, I think, on my third third time. And there's a cash flow section. And they said that the number one mistake of CEOs that are scaling up is that they don't view their accounting department as a, re- a, a return mm-hmm. on investment department. Mm-hmm. And I have always told them this is a this is a maintenance department. Like we have to have you bookkeepers, oh, yeah. <laughs> but you don't make us any more money. Like that's what mm. how I have viewed mm. it. Mm. And when I read it, they talked about cash flow being the number one reason why businesses can't grow or scale, and that the mm-hmm. department that controls cash flow mm. is your bookkeeping and accounting department. And I was thinking, oh my goodness. Like what an aha on that. So be careful well, yeah. how you view it. So that that's amazing. I just had an aha while we were sitting here, which is how that's actually how I am starting to view my personal accounting department, which is like my CPA mm-hmm. and my bookkeeper. Yes. Yep. And I was just like you. I was like, you, you have a job to do. You're gonna help me, you know, do this, pay my taxes or whatever. But now when you when you start to level up with your with yeah. your income and your success, you realize having the right person who can uh be an advisor and a consultant to you, I mean, this yeah, that's, that's huge. Really so yeah, I'm yep. mm-hmm. yeah, personal We're and going- professional. We're literally interviewing for new like resources in that department personally right now because ours has been a defensive position of paying the taxes from the year before, but not in the offensive position of proper tax planning for mm-hmm. the next one, three, and five years. Um, and it's, it makes a huge difference when you get ahead of something like that. Yeah. So I'm going to bring us back to compensation because I kind of want to state, we we were talking about, I, I feel like that was a little bit geared towards ops uh, people. And I want to just spend a little bit of time on revenue and growth positions because um, I do tend well, to spend more time on that. Uh, that's that's a, a big, what you just said is a huge yes, difference true, in my actually. thinking. Because so that's ops true. to me you just is said it actually. driven yeah, that, that's yeah, that's the big that's true. the big difference with compensation in operations versus the way most people think is they view operations as a mm-hmm. management, mm-hmm. like just setting the stage. For my for my team, I ever I tell them every person is a salesperson. So how can we take an ops so position and turn compensation yeah. into growing sales? So is I'll the way that I a little bit. It. I'll push back yeah. a little bit bit on that. It's and it's not a disagreement. It's more of a. I, I, I do agree. I probably shouldn't have worded it that way. But my uh, experience, vast experience is ops tend to feel more comfortable and better and more valued with a higher salary, lower incentivized mm-hmm. pay. And mm-hmm. salespeople, I, I don't, it's not even feel better. They perform better with a lower salary and a higher incentive. Higher opportunity. Pay. So maybe mm-hmm. I should have been more, more specific. That's 100% but, true. Yeah, yep. and so um, Wendy made a comment. You know, it was it's a good anal- it's a good example because she said someone said, "Hey, you know, I want to make a million bucks." And so where I would start with revenue position compensation structuring, and where I always start, 
and especially because a lot of you guys listening have small businesses, is we want to start with what we call on-target earnings. So we want to say, you know, uh, because I'll be, I thought about it. I've been thinking about it for the last three minutes in my head. And I, I was like, am I going to share this? I don't know if I should share it. So I'm going to share it. So when I first met with my um, boss, so to speak, um, in 2018, and he really wanted to hire me, I said, I want to make a million dollars a year income in five years, which is by 2023. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, why? Let's, you know, is there, is it mm-hmm. random? Is there a reason behind it? I said, well, I figured out what, what my wealth building needs to be and the assets I need to buy. And that's about the right amount for me to do everything I think, you know, I think I need to do. Um, plus, sounds cool. So, no, that's not, that's not the real reason. <laughs> it but, does. But it does sound cool. <laughs> it does. Um, but I knew, I knew I could, I knew I could hit it in five years pretty easily um, and probably exceed it with what I was doing already. I just wasn't enjoying that, right? So I thought, well, if I if I know that I can hit it here. So what he did and what I just have now modeled for the last four years is he was like, all right, this is how, I said, show me how I can do that. I, I don't expect you to hand me a check every year for a million dollars. I want you to show me in your world how I can earn that. And we sat on a, we were at a, at a restaurant and we just kind of had salt salt shaker, pepper shaker, sugar packets. And we kind of grouped them all together. And we just talked about this. You're going to make this salary, this bonus on this entity. Then eventually we're going to add in this entity and this entity, then equity here. And then your real estate team here. And then other businesses, you don't know about her best life being one of them. We Mm -hmm. didn't know about her best life. then. And so, you know, we're going to add it and and it should get to easily if, you know, a million or exceed a million. And that's actually how I recommend that you talk with a really strong candidate in the growth sector where you're talking about on target earnings and you know this is the portion you're going to earn from this this is up to you this is your incentivized pay uh, we believe this is a very good number for this year this is good better best you know and um uh and then walk through it that way that that's what i have done um, since I got into this position, which is largely dependent on recruiting recruiters. Yeah. I recruit recruiters yeah. mm-hmm. and salespeople. And it is it has just been, you know, phenomenally uh, good for me and and for the company. The last thing I'll say, because we've kind of touched on it, is a lot of the time the incentivized pay effectively feels like a cost of goods sold. They're not getting right. paid unless you're getting the revenue Absolutely. in. You know, exactly. And wherever well, it and, falls and, in the and, ledger. And can you just pull that apart a little bit? Because maybe a lot mm-hmm. of our listeners don't know exactly what that means. Yeah. So um, if you're paying someone on an incentivized pay, so let's pretend you're hiring a salesperson, you know, a killer, like train killer. You want this person. So you're going to pay him a salary and you're going to pay them, you know, a, a large percentage of commission. Well, what is commission? <laughs> Commission, you don't get paid commission until you make the sale. That's right. So if they're getting a large percentage of commission, it's effectively, you know, it's a cost of sale. It's a cost of goods sold. It's not a fixed overhead item. You might Mm -hmm. be, you know, getting a slightly less net on that sale, but you're getting the sale. You know, it's it's a top line number into your number. But it's tied to the sale. Into your company, I mean. Yeah. Well, it it is cost of sales typically in business is your largest expense percentage. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you do want to be careful um, in general with how you structure that, especially depending on what value you are providing to create the sale, right? Right. And so you do want to be careful with that. Um, But what what I like to view um, from a growth standpoint, it's like, do you have sort of like, this is where you've been able to take your business, right? And you bring Mm -hmm. on a growth leader that can take it much further. Mm-hmm. Pay you can pay on the growth for that leader versus paying on what you've already built. Gary taught us this, right? Like if you're already good with with what you've built so far, but you want to grow and you're hiring an outside leader to help you do that, pay on the growth is what um, a lot of what Bia yes. is saying um, yeah. in that, general. Like take that star that write Thank that down. That. Seven years ago, I didn't do that with a growth leader we hired, and I paid them based off of our current. I got like, I was like, I need to get them there to where they want to go as fast as possible. So I paid Mm -hmm. them off of our current and then also paid them on growth, but I was paying them off of what we were already doing. And all that did was incentivize them to keep us at status quo or or grow slowly, not to incentivize them heavily. Like I should have given them more on the, on the growth than on the current business that we were doing because all it did was made them really comfortable and didn't push hard then for the growth on top of that. And it, it, 
made us grow too slow. We didn't grow fast enough. So, I mean, put a star next to that if you're looking at growth-based sales leader roles. That's a huge takeaway you should have. And I just want to, like paint that picture very plainly for everybody. And this is, you know, like the kindergarten version of that. You have built it up to this point. They don't get paid for that. What they get paid for is what they grow. Just think of it that yep. way, right? That's yep. how I think yep. of it. All right. That's beautiful. Now, well, now the then, other the other key thing here that I, before we uh, mm-hmm. move on, but to, sort of to go back a little bit on anything that's sort of operational. So Via uh, did a beautiful job explaining from a rev- like more of a revenue generating right. uh, mm-hmm. sales force and or leader. What if again the title of this is growing right? How how to pay people to help your business grow? You want to look at compensation around growth for every position. Every position. Now, this takes some creativity because some of the positions you're like, well, how do we use that, right? So, like for example, we have two that I wanted to share. Um, that we have a two sign guys uh, that are on staff. They drive trucks all over the DC metro, putting up signs for us, putting lock boxes on doors, right? And we wanted them to have some type of um, tie into the growth of the company mm-hmm. or have be passionate about it. And so mm-hmm. we know that if we can increase sign calls. We will increase business, right? Mm-hmm. And if they put out more directionals and are more passionate about following how people find our signs and find our mm-hmm. homes for sale, then they will be more likely to do that, right? So creating a, stru- a bonus structure around an, an increase to a source that they have to do with, that their job has in terms of operating and or managing it is one idea. Mm, Even asking for referrals, right? From a service, from a customer service person. That's a big one Um, for us. Yeah. Yeah. Asking them, asking for referrals and getting bonuses around that. The point is that every position in your company, you can tie compensation to growth for what they have, what their role and sort of their control is around. That's the keyword, control. What they can control. If you can incentivize more of that, that's an awesome bonus opportunity. Yep. I love that. So the, that's an awesome summary of the above the line expense, okay. right? Um, being paid on growth or on something that they can control. There's also a way that you can do growth and opportunities for bonus structures, which is profitability, which is below yes. the line. Yes. And so, you know, there's opportunities there where you can, you know, structure your compensation that's fair with the job, but that the bonus structure is actually around the growth and profitability. And there, you know, I love this because it's incentivizing what every business owner really wants to see, which is a healthy, profitable, high net earning business. Um, because if you just have a ton of sales and no profit, what's the point of being in business, right? That's not fun. Um, We want to have a healthy profit. And so, you know, when we look at who are good candidates for these positions, um, it, you know, a, a profitability bonus is really a good opportunity for any position that has control over expenses. Um, your operational leaders are great with this um, because their base plus bonus structure on increased profitability year over year, I know for us has taken our operations team and they watch our bottom line like a hawk. Every single month, they're looking yeah. at what can we redline, what can we improve, what's returning a better ROI. Um, you know, and I think something that a lot of us do is we look at every single expense and see if we can tie an ROI to that. Or we look at every single lead source and say, can we tie an ROI to that um, or a return on an investment? But your operations team is really good when you look at um, profitability comp bonuses because they can help you control what the profit looks like on the bottom because they control the top line expenses. Yeah. And this is, that's so well said, Seychelle. And guys, this is the most important thing that you need to understand about your business is, is that you can't revenue your way to success if you're not that's right. managing your expenses. And I think yes. a lot of us like growth. A lot of us, that's one of our values. Uh, a lot of us are natural uh, salespeople. We like to see yeah. things grow. But if you aren't managing the bottom line, and honestly, guys, the fa- I had this conversation yesterday in our uh, one of the classes that I taught yesterday. You can't, you can't revenue your way out of a hole. You you literally mm-hmm. have to manage expenses, mm-hmm. and that's tough because you want everything to sort of stay the same. If you've got operational staff or whatever, you want to you want to believe that you can do that. But the fastest way to profitability is to look at your PL and you print out your bank statements every month. Look at your mm-hmm. credit card statements, and that's not that is not fun. Um, no. We have a we have a monthly budget. I have a monthly budget meeting with my ops director and. 
it's not fun, but it's really valuable. Well, then when you do that every single month and then you tie the ROI conversation that Say just said, mm-hmm. like oh, every yeah. expense, how can I get a bigger return on that mm-hmm. expense that you're already spending? That's right. like that is where so much power come, comes yeah. into play. Yes. Yes. I remember one time, one time I was on a panel and my fellow panelist was like, I don't, I don't worry about the bottom number or the expenses. Um, I, I just figure if the top line is good, we'll be good. And I'm like, no, I was like, please. No. That gives, that, that's like, makes me so nervous for them. I'm oh, so nervous so for that person. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the other phrase that you'll hear a lot is sales solves everything. But the problem with that is, is if your business isn't structured right, sales will not solve your problem. Because it will, it will, it will literally burn you into not. a hole. Yeah. But if it can, right? So you have to have sales if you're in a sales business. But if the business isn't structured properly, it's not mm-hmm. going to solve your problems. It's just going to top line you into more expenses. So, so yeah. what do we do when we have someone talented that's above our budget, ladies? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Mm. So that's, that's I, I, love, I love this topic. It makes me think of uh, when I was listening to our, is it our brother podcast, Think Like a CEO? Our, our, yeah, <laughs> our broadcast. <laughs> Our broadcast, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, Jay and Gary did a whole topic on ta- hiring talent, and I was so scared because it was I was uh, looking at hiring a talented um, t- leader, and I remember them saying like, "You got to look at it as ninety days. A talented person will get you a return within ninety days. Don't think about it from the whole salary. Cut it down to ninety days, and so that's really what you're looking at is can this person get me a return." and grow my business or help my business within 90 days and try not to stress about the whole amount, but look at 90 days because they will get the return out. Um, And so that just just uh, makes me think of that. Just to make the math easy. So if you're paying someone $120,000, don't think of it as $120,000. Think of it as $30,000. Yeah. That that you might possibly be be losing or expending or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So remember when you're looking at someone that you want to hire, but you're feeling like you can't afford or that their goal, their um, their income goal is not to where you are yet, first and foremost, remember um, that talent will pay for themselves and get you that ROI. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing mm-hmm. is just be flexible. You know, can you reduce the number of days work to be within budget? You know, maybe they're, maybe they're a parent during the pandemic and you can get someone really talented who wants to work from home 25 hours a week. Yeah. Right. A really talented person will bring a lot to the table. I mean, you'd rather have one really talented person that you're paying twice as much as two untalented people. First of all, it's yeah. just so easier true. to manage one yeah. person. Yeah. And then you want yeah. to find out what else That's is true. important to them. What can you add to them? Mm-hmm. It's it's not necessarily like tangible, but it adds value to them. So maybe it's unlimited time off. Maybe, like I said, working from home versus the office. Uh, maybe you need to help them accomplish a personal goal. Like, so maybe they come to you and they say, gosh, my whole life I've made all this money, but I don't have any wealth to show for it, right? And you can yeah. say, listen, mm. as, as part of what I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to become your personal wealth coach and you're going to look up in five years with me and you're going to go from being $250,000 in debt to having, uh, you know, a couple million dollars worth of assets. Well, and that's exactly the last part of this, which is casting the vision which is so good. And Wendy just gave you a very tangible example of what that looks like because talented people want to be part of something bigger, uh, you know, and they want to know they're making a difference. And sometimes you can be direct and honest with them and say, you know what, our organization does not have hundreds of people right now, or it is not a $50 million, $100 million, $200 million revenue business at this point. But that's where we're heading. And I can see that you have potential to be with us on that bus. And I know that with you in the right seat on the bus, moving in that direction, you're going to help us get there faster. And so let's talk about how we can base your compensation model that when we all are growing and winning, you're winning big too. Do you want to be part of something that's growing and, you know, going to be awesome and beneficial for you too? And let's take it there and and cast that vision. And so there's an opportunity there for you, whether it's, you know, tying into whatever it is that's important to them that Wendy talked about above, you can cast the vision then on where your organization is going. The key though is you have to be prepared to follow through on that. We see a lot of companies that cast the vision and then never do anything about it. So you got to cast the vision and they be prepared to take action because that person's going to be fired up and ready to go. So you better be fired up and ready to go create that with them as well. So So true. 
So wise. And also, you know, before we close out, I, I feel like this is a good place to just insert. I'm just going to plant a seed. We're not going to go down the rabbit hole right now. Maybe we can do another episode on it. But, you know, the other thing is when you have a really great talent and you're trying to attract them, talking about a profit's interest into equity partnership, you know, position is is a great thing to do. And, and it feels like the right thing to add to casting the vision where, yeah. you know, profit's interest yeah. is, is, is like basically they get a percentage of profit, um, but they're not full on owners. However, mm -hmm. if the, if the owner was going to sell the business, they would participate in that. They would get um, proceeds that are, um, you know, according to their percentage on that. And that can easily convert into true equity position as well. So that's yep. something to think about with compensation is, is equity position. And and an earning in so that it's not like just handing them the keys to the kingdom. It's like saying, if you hit this milestone, we'll give you this percent and this percent and this percent, and then we'll vest in, you know, four or five years or something, and that'll turn into equity, right? Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Well, ladies, this was this was uh, such a great episode. A little bit hard to recap because there was so much here. So, <laughs> yeah. so what I'll say to to recap is, you know, number one, um, you need to set up initial compensation on a 16 lane highway, even if you're on a one lane highway, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So just so remember good. to Take not time. create a permanent solution to a temporary problem with this. Try to think about the permanent long game solution the best you can. You know, how you do that is you create a, a very clear and detailed job description. What are they accountable to? And you reward on that, ideally, right? Yeah. With a compensation, you, you have a budget. You think about, are you going to um, pay compensation on top line or, you know, bottom line net profit revenue, right? And, you, and, you know, or somewhere in between. And then, you know, just as a reminder, especially when you're going after top talent that you may not feel like you can afford or that's a lot of money, you're really only yeah. committing to 90 days, not the annual salary. I think Wendy said that really, mm -hmm. really well. So we want to thank you for listening this week, you guys, on how to pay people to grow your empire. And we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys.